Kingdom Saints, viewers, subscribers, good morning. I'm about to give y'all a testimony. No script. I ain't got nothing written down. I'm not reading. I'm coming to you mano a mano. Man to man. Or whoever's listening. Doesn't matter. Man, woman, child. Jesus said, I will pour my flesh out. On everybody. Salvation is for everybody. Not just for one person or a group of people or a race. Because God said. God said. Those who know it, my son Jesus, shall have everlasting life. Those that know it, my son. <laughs> That's everybody. Everybody. For, for God so loved the world. So loved the world. That's everybody. The world. You, me, and every living soul on this planet as a chance for salvation. I was walking my own way, <laughs> doing my own thing. <laughs> I was in the my, my, my mentality. It was all about me, 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 me. And what I can get from you, you, and you. That was my mentality. It was me, me, me. My, my, my. I, I, I. And I wasn't even thinking about salvation. I took Jesus out of the equation. I was living the life that I wanted to live the way I wanted to live. And then I came to realize, you know what? Everything that I'm doing, I'm not getting nothing, nothing, nothing out of it. I still felt empty because that's what Satan does. That's what Satan does. With Satan, you, you're always thirsty. You're always thirsty. It gives you and gives you more and more sin and more and more sin until you, so, you become so deep in sin. It just becomes your way of life. That's what Satan does. Always leave you wanting, leaves you wanting for more, wanting more and more. But Jesus gave you the water of life. And you will never, ever, I said, you will never, ever be thirsty again. Because he fulfills us. I used to hate the fact that I had enemies. I used to hate the fact that I was using people. I used to hate the fact that I was living a wretched life, but I was still doing it because I was living in disobedience and I didn't know the word. I didn't know Jesus. All I knew is what I can get out of life. What can I get out of you? You know what I'm saying? And I had nowhere to turn. I had absolutely no place to turn and no one to turn to. I mean, as far as salvation, as far as knowledge about Christ, as far as, as far as being told about the glory and being told about forgiveness and being told about salvation, I had nobody. Only my cronies, only my associates, only my crew. And we wasn't even thinking about that back then. We wasn't thinking nothing about that. But I came to the realization that something's missing. Something was missing in my life. Something was missing in my corazón. 
You know what I'm saying? So I just came to the end of myself and I just gave up. I just gave up. I went through so many turmoil, so many troubles in my life. I just gave up. I tried to commit suicide. But God said, <laughs> no, no, no. I have something for you. I have something for you. I have plans for you. I didn't know it at the time. I just wanted my life to end. But he had something for me. And it took his son, Jesus, the revelation. He revealed Jesus to me. And then he outlined and told me about everything that he has planned for me. Everything. And boy, oh boy, am I so grateful and joyful and happy that I listened and that he waited patiently for me. Waited patiently for me. I, I didn't um I didn't come to Jesus until I was forty eight years old. I lived a whole life of sin. Well not a whole life because I still got a lot of years left. But I lived for 48 years in sin. Yes, that's right, even from when I was born, because we're, we're all born into sin. Thank you, Adam. But, um, Jesus did it all for us so that we wouldn't be lost. Jesus did it all for us. Thank you, my Lord and Savior, Jesus, for setting me free, for giving me the victory, and for opening my eyes so that now I'm able to see. And he can do the same for you, no matter what you go through, no matter how deep the pain, he'll give you his joyful vein and help you to see and he'll help you to live all over again. It is only he that can give you the victory. I didn't realize that until it was almost too late for me. You see, Jesus is my best friend. And he said he will love me to no end. His love is a love that's unconditional. And you will never be forsaken. And he'll snatch you from that evil grasp of Satan. And he'll open your eyes and show you <laughs> the mistakes you've been making. You know what I'm saying? When you come to Jesus, lay down all your shame. Lay down all your pride. And let Jesus live inside. I'm telling you from experience, and this testimony is about to set you free because only Jesus can do what he said he will do. And that's give you life eternally. You can't get life eternal from anyone but Jesus. He is the name above all names. Amen. The devil, Satan, cannot give you life eternal because the devil does not know life eternal. He is eternal torment. He can only give you death. Death. Everybody who is living in sin right now is condemned until they come to Jesus. Everyone and everyone who is walking in the darkness is dying a slow death. A slow death, but a sure death. A sure death unless they repent of all their sins and come to the light that is Christ Jesus. I can't even tell you 
of all the things that he's done for me without going past four hours, five. You got five hours to spare? <laughs> I got a lot of stories. Gang life. Fornicating. Alcoholism. Depression. Despair. Betrayals. Shootings. Suicides. Six death attempts. Yes, Jesus took me out of all of that. He broke every chain. Freed me from bondage. And set me free. Set me free, not only from myself, but from that evil grasp of Satan. Yes, he brought me to the end of myself because scripture says, God's plan for your life, God's plan for everybody's life and for your life and for my life is to come to the end of ourselves and to follow his will, to follow his plan because God's plan is the best plan. God's plan is the best plan for our lives. Because he created us. He created Adam and Eve. So that they can live forever in paradise. And prosper. And multiply. And all God wanted to do. One of them was to give it for them, for us to give him all the glory and worship him. What was so hard about that? But no, the evil one, that one called Satan, said, I hate God. I hate his creation. I'm going to spoil it. I'm going to counterfeit it. I'm going to ruin his paradise that he created. I'm going to ruin his plans. And he slithered and slithered and tempted Eve. And that's when all of our troubles began. Because mankind chose the serpent obeyed the serpent, disobeyed God. When God said, do not eat of the tree of the uh, good and evil. That's the only thing he wanted them not to do. Everything else they could do. They had animals, livestock, I mean, they had all the, all the fruits. They had running water. They had a paradise. All they had to do was be happy, be rejoiceful, worship the Lord, and listen and obey. But see, God's not going to force himself on us. He gave us free will. He gave us free will because our God is a loving, compassionate God. He's not a dictator. Amen? He's sovereign. And all he wanted was for us to love him, to worship him, the creator. He wanted us to worship him, to love him. But we failed. We failed in that capacity to love him and honor him and obey him. But. God said, I'm not going to give up on them. I'm not going to give up on them. And the Israelites, by Adam and Eve multiplied their sons and daughters, and they multiplied the earth. And the Israelites, God made a covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they still disobeyed him. They knew God. 
and they still disobeyed him. But God still didn't give up on us. God said, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give up on my creation or what I've made. So enter Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah. So much displeased God. They committed all forms of wickedness and lived in iniquity and committed the greatest sins of all. And God said, I repented that I, I repent that I made man. I repent that I made man. You know what that means? God was sad. God was sorrowful. He cried. God cried that he made us. We let him down. But no, it's not over yet. <laughs> God said, I will destroy what I've created. I will destroy destroy them, I will destroy my creation, for they bring me to shame, they bring me to shame, they anger me by their disobedience and by their wickedness and by their iniquities, and they have given themselves over to the, to the evil one. So God said, okay, I'm going to send down fire and brimstone. And he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. But he still had a plan for us. Because Lot came, Lot talked to God and Lot, Lot said, Father God, must you destroy everyone? There are righteous ones here. Are you going to destroy us all? And God said, no. You will be saved. Leave. And do not look back. So Lot took his family with him. And his wife. And as Sodom and Gomorrah was being destroyed, when the fire and the brimstone was coming down. They was fleeing. God saved them. But Lot's wife looked back. God said, do not look back. Because when you look back, you're wanting to go back to that world that you're leaving. That's why he said, don't look back. That's a message for us all. He said, don't look back. None of them look back except Lot's wife. She looked back and instantly, immediately became a pillar of salt. There was nothing they could do. There was nothing they could do. And the few remaining, Lot and his family, multiplied and filled the earth. And God spared them because God is so compassionate that he didn't give up on us, even though he wanted to. And even though he had every right to do so, because God is sovereign. God is sovereign. He is the creator of everything. So a lot in their families, they multiply. And um and to Noah. 
Noah and the sons of God saw women and the daughters of men, and the wives and daughters and the women. and defiled themselves and defiled the women. God was mad at us again. God was mad at us again. So you see what Satan started became a domino effect of sin. It has been going on since the beginning of time. So God said, Noah, build an ark and they gave him all the measurements and it took 100 years to build this ark 100 years because God saw what was going on in the land and the Nephilim the men of renown the giants that were born out of the wickedness of the sons of God God said, no, 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 no. This is it. So he said, it's going to destroy the world with a mighty flood. And Noah listened and obeyed God. Built the ark. And the flood came and destroyed the world. Destroyed the world. Amen. See, history shows that God never gave up on us. Never, ever did he give up on us. Because we are the remnant. We are the remnant. Noah, Lot, he always had a master plan. He destroyed the wicked. but he saved the righteous. Amen? So then, Noah went on to conceive and multiply. And the earth was filled again. The earth was filled again. Mm -mm -mm. And guess what? We're doing the same things. Even now, it's worse. We're doing the same things from Sodom and Gomorrah and Nineveh and Babylon. Oh, oh. We fail to realize the seriousness of what we are doing right now. We fail to realize what's going on to happen to all of us if we continue to live in our sin. The same thing that happened to Sodom and Gomorrah, the same thing that happened during the flood with the Nephilim, the same thing that happened to the Israelites, when the earth swallowed up 120,000 who were disobedient to God. But this time, the Lord says, it's going to be worse. It's going to be worse. And this is why it is our last call for Jesus, y'all. So you need to come out of that club. Because when that announcer says last call for alcohol, what you should be listening to is what I'm telling you. Last call for Jesus, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Because God so loved, loves us still. God so loves us still that yet while we are still sinners, Jesus died for our sins. Amen. And this is our last chance for salvation. There's not going to be any more chances. 
Amen. Because Revelations is finished. The Bible is complete. There are no more revelations. We are this close to the end of the world. Look at what's going on in this world right now. Russia, the Ukraine, North Korea, China. Wars and the rumors of wars. Every one of them have their nuclear missiles. Pointed and ready. Pointed and ready. Don't believe me? Go on YouTube. Look it up. Putin. The North Korea uh, president. I, I can't pronounce his name. It's Myung Hong Chung Hong Hong Chung Hong Hong. They are China, Russia. The um. North Korea, the Ukraine, they all have weapons pointed at each other. And Russia has even threatened us, the United States. But China is the one who, China is the country that's most powerful. And they have already said that they're going to side with Russia. So they're already talking about World War Three, this and that. But um, everything that's happening right now in this world has already been prophesied by God the Father. There is no more revelation. The closer we get to revelation, the closer we get to the end and the closer we get to Jesus coming. There is no more. The Bible is complete. The apostles have already make sure that it's complete so there is no more chance for any of us unless we accept Jesus not tomorrow not next week not in an hour how about right now because none of us knows what's going to be what's going to happen in an hour or next week hey some of us not, might, might not be here tonight. Some of us might die in our sleep. You know what I'm saying? Don't die in your sins. Accept Jesus and let your new life begin. He'll remove all sins from within. And your new life with him will start all over again. Because he is the creation, the author and the finisher of our faith. You have to accept Jesus right now and finish this race. Amen. Amen. Okay, viewers. I love you all. Thanks for watching. Y'all don't forget to, um, Hit that like button. And just remember, one faith, one baptism, one God. Go ahead and subscribe. Go ahead and subscribe.